guys, welcome to Crisp Tips of the Week, brand new series that is going to be focused on crisp features. Today, we're going to talk about live chat triggers. So once you've reached the plugin section, just click on trigger here. As you can see, we got plenty of different live chat triggers that are already available. These are very interesting ways to automate the customer's uh, engagement and also website visitors engagement. So you should always try to set dedicated triggers on your key pages. So for example, if you are building a SaaS software, it would be interesting to set some uh, dedicated messages on the pricing page, on the integration page, on knowledge base too, uh, on some key pages of your uh, SaaS software, in fact. So I'm not going to cover how you can uh, set triggers as there are already some existing videos, but I'm going to show you a few tips that will help you to better use uh, the live chat triggers. So we're going to focus on these different events. So first, the on-live intent, uh, which is very interesting because you can combine it with on pages and on your URL parameters. So it means that, for example, if you want to combine on live intent with on URL parameters, you could be focusing on users that are coming from your ads, right? So if you are doing some Google ad or some Facebook ads, for example, then you could set some dedicated parameters in your URL that you could use to then uh, trigger some dedicated messages uh, sent from the live chat. So it could be really interesting to offer some um, contextualized messages that would pop up when the user is about to leave. Because as you know, the traffic coming from Facebook or Google by doing ads is quite expensive. So you should really focus on uh, trying to keep them on your website. So it could be a nice way to do it. So for example, it would be uh, UTM, as you might be using UTM in your uh, campaigns, and then add a parameter. So it would be UTM source would be, for example, Facebook or uh, Google and so on uh, and so ever. So you could add this and that's it. And you could also combine with some delay so that you can really easily uh, focus the right people, not the people that will bounce immediately after coming to your website because sometimes it happens, but rather sending these messages to people that spend at least 20 seconds on your website, which means that they may be interested by your proposition value. So this was one example. Then you can also combine on live intent with on pages and also with after delay. So that wouldn't be really interesting to focus on those three, but rather focus on those two. For example, if you are a e-commerce website and you are trying to decrease the number of cart abandonment, then this option would be a great way for you because as users are trying to leave on your key pages, then you could automate a message that will be sent at the right moment. It means at the moment where the user is about to leave your website and leave this cart that is just waiting for well, payment. So this is quite simple to do. You just have to add a page, for example, uh, yourwebsite.com slash checkout, for example. Then you can have a star. It means that it will take any sub pages and also um, you could add double star if you want to make it available for any other uh, subdirectories that would go through the checkout. Okay. Okay. Then you can also add a click on link. So, for example, um, you could totally send a specific messages to a user to start a conversation. So, for example, on a button that will be a call for a demo or a call back or any other action that are key to your process, then you could totally add a CSS ID that you will get from uh, your website by inspecting the code. 
once you've had your ID, so for example, my ID, then the, the, the message that you'll choose to send will be triggered every time. So it means that if you, as I said, set any buttons like do, um, do a demo, request a demo, uh, get a phone call, or any of the key action, as I said, you could set a message that would engage the conversation with the user to qualify him. It would be also a great way for you um, to automate customers' engagement on your website and so decrease maybe the bounce rate. So we saw the on pages, we saw the on URL parameters. Uh, we didn't have a look at on user event. So on user event is the data that you get from uh, your user. So these data are available in the contact form here. Okay. So you'll have to set dedicated data that could be very useful. So it's up to you, in fact, depending on the data that you set to your user, then you'll be able to trigger specific messages based on the data that has just been uh, modified, for example. So then on user events, um, well, as you, may, as you know, Chris helps you to create trip cam So on user event, uh, this is a key action. It means that using Chris, as you may know, you are able to set specific events based on user interaction. So to do that, you'll have to use our JavaScript SDK. Um, once you've done that, for example, if you set uh, an event on the sign up or even uh, on the, the, the payment or on any key action, in fact, of your website or in your product, then uh, you could trigger uh, specific messages. So on user data is uh, quite the same as the event, despite that this is uh, user data rather than user action. So you have the key, you have the value. So for example, if that the key uh, pricing is uh, unlimited, then you could trigger a specific messages. Normally you can combine with a delay too. Then here are some specific uh, behaviors that you could enable or not. So execute if no other trigger used, it means that this trigger will not be available if there was some previous triggers that have been displayed, right? So my advice is always to not make it available. You also get some uh, information about show triggers as sent from the website rather than uh, operator. It's not that interesting, but sometimes it can depend on your process. It means that, in fact, when the bubble will pop up, there's no um, avatar coming from the operator that will be displayed, but rather just a bubble. So available only when it's online, as it said, it's quite easy to understand. Upon first visit, if you want to target only uh, first visitors, could be interesting. And also, if you are targeting specific countries and not every people uh, browsing onto your website, could be useful to do that too. And then you can also use the desktop and the mobile devices so that you can target the right persona depending on your target. So as you, as you saw, it's just quite easy to set. And once again, this is something that could really have a huge impact on your website engagement. So you should really try to set them up. Thank you for watching and see you later.